home again. Good day everyone. Indeed, after three and a half months of slaving away at school, I have finally returned home for Christmas break. What I'm going to do today for my first video filming here at home is a tear apart of this Airworks fan heater which was made in the mid or late 2000s. The reason I'm tearing this thing apart, I believe it still works, but uh, mum was using it a while back while I was still in Fredericton. And she said, uh, what happened was she went to unplug it and, oh yeah, this is the first time taking a look at this close up, but she said she went to unplug it and she had it plugged into an extension cord, which is something I know uh, generally isn't recommended, but it was a 15 amp rated extension cord with nothing else plugged into it, so fine by my standards, I think. But uh, she unplugged it from the extension cord and the plug was extremely hot and the extension cord, it was a white extension cord, was actually charred brown around where this plugged in. So she is not going to use this heater anymore. She wants it thrown away. And she also threw away the extension cord. Good enough for me. So uh, we're going to take this thing apart. And uh, yeah, you can see there, look at that. I don't know if... Uh, Yeah, you can see the plastic's kind of just really melted away and it bubbled up on the other side here. Not very good. Maybe the heating coil's partially shorted out and it's drawing more than 15 amps when it's on the maximum heat setting, although I'd hope the breaker would go off in that case. The extension cord, I do believe, was a, a dollar store one, so, you know, I, I don't like dollar store extension cords. I've seen some pretty crappy ones. Maybe there was a, a resistive connection between the plug here and the extension cord, which would obviously make it heat up. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, before we take this apart, I will plug it in. But uh, you know what's funny? Before this heater, before we got this one a few years ago, we had an identical one. And that one also quit working, but in a rather dangerous way. It was running normally one day, and then all of a sudden... It just started shooting sparks right out of this hole here where the, where the uh, cord comes out. It just started sparking out of there and I was present and I ran and pulled the cord out and threw it away and that was it. So yeah, apparently these Airworks heaters, what model is this? Airworks model AFH201OW. I guess these are pretty crappy heaters, unlike that wonderful heater right there from 1968 which I functionally restored last year that's what you hear turning on and off in the background so yeah you know modern heaters uh, I guess they kind of vary in quality you know this one's made out of plastic that's not something uh, I particularly uh, enjoy so anyway uh, first thing I'm gonna do is we'll actually plug this in and see if it actually works see if the fan works it has a fan setting here so I'll turn it to that just to see if the fan works and uh, it has an oscillation setting as well it actually oscillates on its base so that'll be interesting to see how that works when we pull this thing apart alright let's see how this thing works fan works normally. Draws a normal amount of current. Heating draws a normal amount of current. What about high heat? High heat draws a normal amount of current. Heater actually seems to work just fine. But whatever. I have no problem doing away with this thing. So, let's haul it apart. I see four Phillips screws. So I'll take those out. All right, we're inside. Front cover still held on by all the wiring, but uh, we got a shaded pole motor, not a C-frame motor, but still a shaded pole motor with a nice metal uh, fan blade set. That's cool. I'll definitely save that. And here's the uh, heating coils, and you see the thermostat uh, and the power switch control. And interestingly, uh, you'll notice that the oscillator mechanism is not driven by the fan motor. This motor wouldn't have enough power to do that. It's actually driven by what appears to be a synchronous motor. That's pretty cool. And it has apparently has its own uh, uh, gear down uh, gear mechanism because it says it spins at 1.6 to 1.9 revolutions per minute. I assume that's what that's saying. 
100 to 120 volt, 50 or 60 hertz. So obviously this motor was made for the Japan market as well, which is 100 volts, 50 hertz. Clockwise and or counterclockwise, something. Cool. Cool, without too much fiddling, the heating coil and the fan comes out, complete with moth carcass. Oh, it's pretty neat. We get a shaded pole motor, uh, the internally wound type rather than the uh, C-frame type with the external coil. Sweet. And it seems to be nice and lubricated too. Awesome. I've been wanting to build a uh, homemade miniature box fan using something like this. Like uh, that motor, using that motor down there, but I don't have a blade set. And it's quite a few bucks to purchase one online, especially since I don't know if the shaft of the blade set would fit on that particular motor. But here I've got the whole package already. Sweet. Pretty nice. And uh, here's the heating coil. After figuring out how the two coils were wired, I measured the resistance, came out to 14 ohms, which works out because that comes out to 900 watts. And uh, how it works is the two coils are actually connected in series right here. This little bit right there, you can see one coil connects to it and then it bridges to the other. And so the two terminals you measure across are right there. So on the 900 watt mode, both coils are connected in series. But when you switch to the 1500 watt mode, it shorts out one of the coils. So just one sole coil is connected to power. It might seem unintuitive that one coil running creates more heat than having both coils running but it's because they're in series when they're in series the resistance is more and power is uh, voltage squared divided by the resistance so the higher your resistance the uh, less power you get so by shorting out one of the coils and having just one coil connected to power you get less resistance and that one coil glows hotter and uh, you get more power and thus more heat but uh, yeah, I don't think I'll have a use for this. Uh, resistance isn't high enough for me to have any use for it for the stuff I do, so I'll probably just throw it away. But uh, I do have a use for this fan, so now let's check this fan out. All right, fan's connected to power. Let's see how it runs. Lots of vibration, that's how I gotta put something under that. Uh, rubber eraser, maybe? Ah, uh, yeah, that should be good. Hopefully, it doesn't jitter around and jitter off the eraser. And it's gonna. Alright, balls to the wall, I'm just going to hold it. It vibrates a lot. It vibrates quite a bit. Runs good though. Vibrates too much though. Runs nice and quiet. I think the blade set needs to be balanced a bit though. Alright, I've removed the blade set. Let's see how the motor itself runs. Uh, no vibration that I can see. Let me pick it up. Oh yeah, no vibration at all. Okay, so the blade set's slightly out of balance. The problem is, it's only very slightly out of balance. Because when I look at it spinning, I cannot obviously see which blades are out of balance, so maybe, well obviously I guess once it's, once the motor's actually screwed onto something, it'll work, because it'll absorb the vibration, because I don't remember this heater ever vibrating, but as long as we got the motor running, let's uh, see what the power specs are, oh look at that, 0.12 amps, just an itty bitty motor. 10 watts and a good power factor, not too high. If it was too high, it would suggest that there is a short somewhere in the motor. Now, can I can I stall it? How 
how much current is drawn. When it's stalled, it's only 0.14 amps. Very nice. Anyway, yeah, I often think about taking a fan like that and building a homemade box fan out of it. But, uh, Lord knows if I'll ever get that done. But for now, let's see if we can't get this here uh, synchronous motor out of there. Well, I can't get to the motor with those uh, bolts that are nuts there because they're too close to the motor body. So I took the bottom cover off, and this is what we get. So I'm just going to remove those three screws and uh, see if I can get to what we need from there. Well, I managed to haul the entire oscillation base off, and uh, I guess how it works is the motor, yeah, the output for the motor was connected to this thing, which rotates. And you can see here, so it rotate, it pivots on this shaft right here, so I guess it just kind of moved to one end as it rotated. And then when it got to the other end, the motor switched directions and it went back. So, I'll try removing these two screws. And there's the oscillation motor. I say, what an odd little device. Let's hook it up to power and see what it does. Alright, let's see what this does. Oh, well, there it goes. Moving extremely slowly. Have a look at that. Neat. Ooh, it vibrates at 60 hertz. Can I stop it? No, it's very tough. I thought it could switch directions. Maybe not. Maybe there's something else that makes it switch directions. Oh, there it goes. Now it's running in the other direction. Maybe there was some sort of mechanism to cut power off and then turn it back on and it runs in the other direction. I don't know. Neato, anyhow. Very quiet. 20 milliamps. Almost 3 watts, and a rather high power factor. Interesting. Wow, how did I miss that? It's a little neon bulb for the power indicator. The uh, heat shrink tubing here was up almost, it almost covered the entire lamp itself, so I cut it down a bit. But uh, I believe it has an inline resistor already, so let's uh, hook it up and see how that works. Alright, let's take a look at this guy. Kilowatt meter doesn't have enough resolution to measure the tiny amount of current that'll draw, so I've got the uh, multimeter set up instead. See how it works. And there it is. 3.3 milliamps. So 300 microamps. Oh no, apparently 20 oh it's on DC. 318 microamps. I can't measure the arc voltage because uh, the wires are buried under the heat shrink tubing, but if we assume it's 60 uh, volts, like another neon lamp I have, that equates to power, lamp power of 20 milliwatts. Well, that's about it. The only other thing I'm going to do is uh, cut off this wire because the 10 miles of wire I, I already have isn't enough. And uh, then I'll throw what's left of this thing back together. I'll keep the motors. But uh, yeah, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed. And join me for my next electronic tear apart video where I will be tearing apart a microwave oven. Yes, an entire microwave oven. So, I'll see you guys then and hope you enjoyed.